here we have a rod and we've got a smooth collar here and then we've got a roller at B. Now what we want to do is we want to find the support reactions at A and then B. We also have these two applied forces. All right, so this is one of our 3D equilibrium problems. So first thing we want to do is we want to draw the free body diagram. And when we do that, we'll go through and explain kind of what's going on here with that collar. So let's draw the outline. So this is the outline. All the forces are going to act on this part. And if you want, you can kind of draw the little collar there. Now, let me switch pins. Let's put the forces on here. Let's start out with these two. Those are pretty obvious because they're given. So we have 800 newtons. And then we've got 600 newtons. Now this rod right here, it's lying in the XY plane. All right, so it might be kind of hard to see in the picture, but it's lying in the XY plane. It's supported by this roller at B. Now remember, the roller just allows this thing to sit on top of it. So it's sitting on top of it. So the roller provides a vertical force upward. Let's call that BZ. Now we go to the collar. So this is a smooth collar. We don't have to worry about any friction or anything like that. Now let's think about what this collar allows us to do. Now basically this is a cylinder and it's open here at the ends and it basically glides over this metal bar. Right, so that's what it does. Glides over it so it can slide back and forth this way. Now let's look at the forces first. So we already said that we can have translation along this axis, which is the x-axis. Now if you look at this, remember think of this as a cylinder and there's this bar going through it. Are we going to be able to have translation in the z-direction? No. So there's a force to prevent that translation. So let's call that az. Now can we translate in the y-direction? So think about applying a force here at the end and trying to pull it this way. Is it going to go anywhere? No, right? Because it's we've got this collar here. It's wrapped around this guide. So there is no possibility of moving in the y direction. That means we need to have a force applied. Let's call that AY. Now the x direction, we already said we could translate along this axis. So do we need a force? Nope, because remember, these forces prevent the translation. So we want to allow that X translation to happen, so we do not put a force here. Now let's think about the moments. Let's see what goes on with that. Let's think about rotation about the X axis. So imagine yourself taking the end of this and trying to rotate it about the X axis. Would you be able to do that? You could, right, if you wanted to, because this is just a cylinder, and inside of that cylinder is this metal bar, right? So if we wanted, we could rotate this back and forth about the x-axis. So that is a moment that is possible. We don't need to prevent that moment because that's what we want, just looking at this picture. Now, what about the y-axis? If you think about it, could you take this and then try to rotate it about this y-axis? All right, so could we have this kind of rotation? No, right? Because once we tried to do that, this metal bar inside of here is going to hit the edge of this cylinder, right, of this collar. So that alone is going to prevent that rotation. Okay, so if it's fitted in here, you're not going to allow that rotation. That means we need to have a moment about the y-axis. So the force, or not the force, but the moment produced by the collar about the y-axis is going to be MAY. Now what about Z? So if Z is the vertical axis, can we rotate this way? So think about that. Can you spin this around 
the z-axis? No, you can't do that either, right? For the same reason. You've got this bar inside of the collar. That bar is going to keep you from spinning this thing around the z-axis. That means we need to have a moment about the z-axis. So we'll have maz. Now that's going to be our free body diagram. Again, we weren't given the weight or anything, so we'll leave that off. And now we can get started with our equilibrium equations. So let's go ahead and look at our forces. Notice this is x in this diagram. So let's say coming out this way is positive. Now do we have any forces in the x direction? We don't have any, right? Nothing here is in the x direction. So this is just zero, we don't have anything. Now what about the y direction? This way is positive. What about that? We do have y force, right? We have ay. That's in the y direction. That's the only one we have though, so that's got to be zero. And it's zero because uh, if you look, there aren't any forces for it to counteract. Remember, these forces are meant to counteract any of the other forces found in the system. Doesn't need to counteract anything, so it's going to be zero. Now, the z direction. Oops, positive. We got a lot of stuff in the z direction. We've got az, the 800, the 600, and then bz. So let's put those in. Got a positive az. I just assumed that direction because I always assume positive. And then we have minus 800, minus 600, and then plus bz equals zero. All right, so we have two unknowns. We can't do anything with that yet. Let's go ahead and go to the moment equation. I'm going to say counterclockwise is positive. Now we need a point to take our moment about. I'm just going to go ahead and take it about point A. You could take it about point B if you wanted. It's up to you. So if we look at point A, we need to find the moment due to each of these forces about that point. Let's start with the 800 Newton force first. We're going from A to B, so I need this position vector. And if you look, we're just going out 0.8 in the J direction. We'll cross that with negative 800K. That takes care of this one. Let's do the 600. So now for this one, I need a position vector from A out. Oops, it's right there. And that position vector, we're going backwards in the x direction, so we'll have negative 0.4i. And then we're going to the right, 1.6. So we'll have 1.6j. Cross that with negative 600k. And that takes care of that one. Now we have bz, All right? So due to this roller right here. So you find your position vector. We go from A over to B. That position vector is going to be negative 0.8 because we're going back the 0.8. And that's I and then plus 1.6J. And then we cross that with BZK because we're assuming that that's positive because that's the direction it should be. And this guy has to equal zero. I want you to do the cross products and group everything up. Now, if we go through here, do the cross products, what we get is negative 640i. That's from right here. Minus 240j. Minus 960i. Plus 0.8bzj. Plus 1.6bzi. And that's what we get for the forces. All right. Now, is there anything else we need to add in here to this moment equation? I forgot about it up here when I put this equal zero. 
What are we missing here? We forgot about these, right? We need to put those in. Okay, so we got to add those in. So those aren't due to forces, those are just due to the collar itself. So let's go ahead and we'll add those in right here. I'm going to assume they're positive. So we're going to have MAY. That's a moment about the y-axis, so the unit vector would be J if we assume it's positive. And then we're going to have MAZK because this would be a moment about the z-axis, so K would be the unit vector. Now that should be zero. All right, so let's take that out since we forgot to put those moments there first. Now we've got this. Now we have several components here. We've got K, J, and I. We can group up the like components, and then that's going to give us three equations that we can use to solve. So let's look at this, some of the moments about uh, the x-axis. Actually, let's not look at that. Let's just put I. That will make more sense. So the I terms, we've got negative 640 minus 960. We've got these two done. And then plus 1.6BZ. And then that's it. So this equals 0. Now with this, we can find BZ. So BZ is 1,000 newtons. And it's positive, so pointing upward was correct, which is what we would expect when you have a mass resting on top of that roller. Now J, let's look at the J terms. We've got negative 240 plus 0.8BZ and MAY. That's got to equal zero. Now we can't solve yet for that because we have too many unknowns. So we're going to keep going, just hang on to that equation. Actually, we can solve for that. Forgot we already have this BZ, so let's plug this BZ in here. Then we can solve for MAY. Amazing how quickly I forget these things. All right, so MAY is going to be negative 560 Newton meters. And the negative just means we assume the wrong direction. I assumed it was positive, so counterclockwise. Really, that moment is clockwise about the y-axis. All right, so it's really, if you can see, it's kind of going this way. All right, clockwise direction about that y-axis. Lastly, let's do k. So if we look at the k terms, we have maz. That's all we got. So maz is going to be zero. So you can put a box around that if you want. Now we've got those things, so let's see what else we're missing. We got AY, we got the two moments, we got BZ. Last thing we're missing is AZ. So if we call this equation 1, from that equation we need to plug in BZ. And then you can solve and get that AZ is 400 newtons. It's positive, so that means going up is the correct direction. All right. And if you look, BZ plus AZ is 1400. That counteracts the 800 plus the 600, which was acting downward, right? So that's 1400. So notice how they cancel each other out. So your support reactions are meant to cancel out the effects of the forces and moments on uh, your system from the external sources. Okay? All right, guys, that's the end of that one. So we will move on to a new topic in the next video. Have a great day.